In this video, we're going to start looking at coordinate geometry. In this particular unit, we focus on the equation of a straight line. In the first video, we're going to look at the gradient of a straight line, and then in later videos, we will look at the equation of a straight line, parallel and perpendicular lines, and applications of straight lines. Before we go any further, I think it's important to stress, with this particular unit, drawing problems can really help. My saying is, if in doubt, sketch it out. So let's start off now with the gradient of a straight line. So what we're going to have then is the gradient, and we can write the gradient now as m. m is generally used for the gradient, and we say that this is going to be y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Initially, this might look confusing. Later on, it will become very straightforward to use by simply substituting in coordinates. This is just saying the change in y over the change in x, or if you like, the rise over the run. Let's go back a bit and start off with horizontal and vertical lines. If we have now a horizontal line, and just join this on, this could be the line, for example, now y is equal to 2. So if I just put this on, y is equal to 2. This will have a zero gradient. So if I just picked a point here and a point here, this might be now the point 2 comma 2, and this might be 4 comma 2. All I'm going to do is substitute these in and show now that the gradient of this line is going to be zero. I can choose which ones I want. So for example now, if I write this out here, let's put it here, 2, 2, and we're going to have now 4, 2. I can say that this is going to be x1. If I choose this to be x1, this must be y1. I need to keep consistent. Therefore, this must be x2, and this must be y2. I can't just swap and have this one as x1, this one as y2, and vice versa. So if we look at the gradient, it's the change in y over the change in x. So we can see now that y1 minus y2 would be 2 minus 2. And then we'd have x1 minus x2, which is going to be 4 minus 2. Straight away, the numerator is going to give us 0. Therefore, now we have a gradient of 0. And that's fairly straightforward. There's no change in the y coordinate. If we had now a vertical line, so let's go ahead and put a vertical line here, and we'll keep this uh, positive. Let's put this one on. This is going to be now the line, let's say that this is going to be x is equal to 1. We say that the gradient is undefined, or we have an infinite gradient. So if we uh, just chose a point on here, let's go ahead and let's say we've got now the first point, uh, and we're going to have 1, 4. And then we're going to have now the other one, and we'll do 1, 2. You can see now there's no change in the x-coordinate. So what we'll have then now is the change in y. So that's going to be 4 minus 2 over the change in x, which is going to be 1 minus 1. That now gives us 2 in the numerator, but we have 0 in the denominator. When we have 0 in the denominator, that is undefined. So we would say now that the gradient of a vertical line is infinite. Okay, just while we're here, I didn't need to do 4 minus 2. I could have done 2 minus 4. So if we went ahead and did that, that would be perfectly fine, as long as we're consistent. So we can do 4 minus 2 over 1 minus 1, or 2 minus 4 over 1 minus 1. In later examples, when these values are different, that will make a little more sense. I've got a graphing calculator here, so let's go ahead and look at it. And this now is the line y is equal to 2. So we've got now a zero gradient. If I move this around, again, we've got a zero gradient. If I now put the line on here, I've got x is equal to 2. So the green line, that now has an infinite gradient. If we have that vertical line, wherever we move it, it will now be an infinite gradient. 
Okay, let's look at the case where we don't have a zero or infinite gradient. And I'm going to introduce a line now, y is equal to mx. We can write the equation of a straight line in the form y is equal to mx plus c. m is the gradient, c is the y-intercept. I've left the c off here because it doesn't really assist our uh, video. And when we're looking at the equation of a straight line in the next video, I will include that value of c. Okay, so what we've got now is y is equal to mx. And you can see here, I'm changing the value of m. So this is going to be y is equal to 1x or just x. So we're going to have the point 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on and so forth. So if we were using our particular formula, let's just choose some points. Let's choose 3, 3, that's on the line, and 1, 1, that's on the line. So what we could have now, m, we're going to have now, and I'm not even going to refer to this now, it's just the change in y. The change in y is going to be 3 minus 1, over the change in the x coordinates, which is going to be now 3 minus 1. That's going to give me 2 over 2, which is going to give me 1. Now, what would happen if I'd gone the other way, and I'd said now that m is going to be equal to 1 minus 3, so 1 minus 3, over now 1 minus 3, so 1 minus 3. Well, that's going to give me negative 2, divided by negative 2. If we divide two negatives, we get a positive answer. So it shows it doesn't matter which way around I do it, as long as I'm consistent. So you might ask why I'm bothering to do this when I could just go ahead and look at the graph. We can see now that this has gone up 2 for every 2 it goes across. So across 2, up 2, therefore that's going to be 1. Across 1, up 1, it's going to be 1. Sometimes we're going to get nasty fractional values, and this is not going to be the case. Let's just now increase the gradient, and we're going to have positive 2. So this time we can see the change in y is 2 over the change in x is going to be 1. We can pick that at any point. So if you want, you can have 1, 2, and 2, 4. So let's go ahead and put those in. So we've got now 1, 2, and 2, 4. So 2, 4 and 1, 2. You might uh, be asking now why I'm going ahead and writing the larger positive values first. The reason is it makes my calculation slightly easier. I want to keep things positive. Clearly with some examples we're not going to be able to, but it just avoids now, uh, well I say making errors, um, wouldn't necessarily. For example now if we did 2 minus 4, over 1 minus 2, that's going to give me negative 2 over negative 1, which of course is 2. It just avoids mistakes. So there we go, that now gives us a positive gradient. So if we go back, we can look at that. The steeper this gradient, the closer this line is going to get to the y-axis. If we go back now, we're back down to 0, which is on the x-axis. If we make this now negative 1, we've got these points on here. So let's just do that one and pick these points off here to show that this will give us now the negative one. We can see this goes down one for every one it goes across. So it's going to be negative one over one. So if we just pick two points off here, let's go ahead and do that. What we had then are the points negative two comma two. And we had now negative one comma positive one. So if we look at this now, the change in y over the change in x. So it's going to be 2 minus 1 and then we're going to have negative 2 and we need to subtract from this negative 1. Often uh, students in their infancy do make uh, errors in terms of the signs. Just be careful with this. If we do negative 2 and subtract negative 1 that's going to give me now negative 1 which gives me negative 1. Um, again, I could have swapped those round. I could have done 1 subtract 2 and negative 1 subtract for negative 2. If I'd done that, let's go ahead and do that. m is going to be equal to 1 minus 2. Then we're going to have the negative 1. We're going to subtract away for negative 2. That will give me negative 1 in the numerator. If I do negative 1 and subtract negative 2, that gives me positive 1, which of course now gives me negative 1. 
So what we're now going to do is just look at some basic examples of finding the gradient of a straight line given two points that it goes through. So let's go ahead and look at that. We're asked to find the gradient of a line passing through each set of points given below. So this one right here, 2, 1 and 6, 9. So all I'm going to do is write now for gradient m, we're going to do 9 minus 1, that's the change in y, 9 minus 1 over now 6 minus 2. So 6 minus 2. That's going to give me now in the numerator 8, in the denominator 4, 8 over 4 simplifies to give 2. If we've gone the other way, we could have done 1 minus the 9, so the change in y, over now the change in x, and being consistent. I can't now do 1 minus 9 over 6 minus 2. That's not being consistent. So this is going to be 2 minus the 6. Negative 8 over now negative 4, which is going to give me 2. If you're thinking, have I got this right? Should it be positive or should it be negative? Let's get some feel of where these points are in now or on the coordinate axis to get some idea. So let's just put 2, 1 here. That's going to be that. So that's a point 2, 1. And then this point, which is going to be 6, 9. So let's put that somewhere up here. Again, it doesn't have to be accurate. When you're doing your sketches, it's not about accuracy as such. It's about a conceptual understanding of what's going on. This is what we've got. Now, if we just look at this, and I made a triangle, we can see that gradient is positive. We can see that the change in the y coordinates here is going to be 8. The change in the x coordinates is going to be 4. So it's 8 over 4, it's positive, therefore the gradient is 2. Okay, let's do the next one. So this is b. So I'm going to do now 7 minus 5. That's the change in y over 4. 4 minus 2. That's going to give me now 2 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator, which is going to give me 1. So that will give me now a gradient of 1. You could have swapped that round 5 minus 7 over 2 minus 4 and dealt with the negatives. I'm not going to bother. I'm simply going to do that and say that the gradient is 1. Again, if you want to just draw a quick sketch when you're doing this to begin with, you can do. OK, let's look at this one. Need to be a little careful with this one because we've got some negatives. So in the numerator, the change in y, I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to subtract from that now negative 1, the change in y. Then I'm going to do now negative 3 and I'm going to subtract 2. We need to be consistent. This one as well, uh, again, students may struggle with the idea of having the two twos and uh, getting a little muddled up really doesn't matter as we will over time be fairly comfortable with this so in the numerator 2 subtract negative 1 is positive 3 in the denominator we can have negative 5 that is not a nice integer or whole number solution that we've got before and that's why if we use the um the, the method of the uh the grid it does have its limitations and especially if the points are a long way away and those numbers are a little messy if we wanted to get some uh, understanding of this let's just go ahead and put this on so we've got the points now negative 3 2 which is let's just put that there so that's going to be negative 3 2 and we've got this point here which is 2 negative 1 so that um, I'll put that one just there so that's going to be 2, negative 1. So straight away we can see now that the gradient of this line is going to be negative. So it's through these two points here. I've put this as 3 over negative 5. You can just write this now as negative 3 over 5. So you can have the negative sign out front, you can have it in the numerator or the denominator. So if we look at this now, this one is going down as it's going across. So if we look at what it goes down by, we can see now that we're going to have the y coordinate, which is going to be 2, and then the, x, uh, the, the y coordinate here, which is going to be negative 1. So that is going to be 3. And then if we consider now what it's going across, what we've got here, now it's a negative uh, 3 and a 2, that is 5. So that would give us now the change in y over the change in x, so it's negative 3 fifths. Okay, let's look at the last one. Now, quite clearly, this last one is the exact reason we use the formula. So what I'm going to do is now m, the gradient is the change in y. I'm taking 3 and I'm going to subtract from this now 
the negative three quarters. So three subtract negative three quarters. Then we're going to do one half and we're going to subtract from that three over two. So what I'm going to get here, if I convert this up, that's going to give me 12 over four. So just writing this as an equivalent fraction, 12 over four plus three over four is going to give me 15 over four in the numerator. We're going to have now one half minus one and a half, which is going to give me now negative one. So all I've done is the change in y. So we've done now three subtract the negative three quarters and one subtract three over two. If I look at this now, I could write this as 15 over four divided by negative four over four. So my final answer, I'm just writing these now as equivalent fractions to simplify. We could write this now, m is going to be equal to negative 15 fourths. Entirely up to you, you didn't have to write this as hopefully you can see that the, uh, the division by negative one will just make that negative 15 fourths. But if it wasn't, for example, and this was three, I would switch that up to um, or some other number, I'd just write an equivalent fraction. I don't think we needed that. But that gives us now the gradient of negative 15 fourths. So hopefully with these last couple of examples, um, I've convinced you not to just try and look at a, a graph and do the points. So for, exa uh, if, for example, if we had the point P, which was 7.2, um, negative 1.4, and we had now... Q, which was going to be, uh, let's go for 3.1, and then we had now negative, let's say negative 2.6. Quite clearly, we wouldn't use a graph. If we wanted the gradient, and we could write this as MPQ, we'd have the change in Y, which is going to be now, I'm going to write negative 1.4. We're going to subtract now the negative 2.6. And that is going to be over 7.2, and we're going to subtract now the 3.1. So I've done the change in y over now the change in x. Quite clearly, we can see that this is going to be easier if I use the formula rather than try and do it now on the grid. So that's like going to give me positive 1.2 over now 4.1, so 4.1. Um, and we could, I mean, you could take these decimals out if you wanted to. Uh, that looks to be about right. So what could we write that as? 12 over 41 um, if we wished. So there we go. That is the gradient. Okay, let's just look at one more question that has now the application of a gradient. It says the gradient of a line passing through the point uh, P, 5 and 1, negative 7 is 4. We need to find the value of P. OK, all we're going to do is substitute this into the formula. So what we're going to have now, the gradient is going to be the change in y over the change in x. So we can write y1 minus y2 over now x1 minus x2. That is what I'm going to substitute it into. So we can say it now the gradient, which is 4, we're told the gradient is 4. The change in y, well this is going to be 5 and we're going to subtract from this negative 7 and then divide by p minus 1. So if we look at this, what we're going to have is 4 is equal to 12 divided by p minus 1. At this stage, you could divide both sides if you wanted by 4. It really doesn't matter. Or just multiply through. It's entirely up to. So if dividing both sides by 4, we've got this scenario. So we can say now multiplying both sides now by the denominator of a fraction, p minus 1 is equal to 3, so p is going to be equal to 4. So all I've done is simply now used this, use the approach of the formula to find the value of p by substituting in. You didn't have to do this here, you could have said 4 lots of the quantity p minus 1 is equal to 12, you could have done p minus 1 is equal to 3, dividing both sides by 4. It really doesn't matter, you could have even expanded it out, hopefully you can see that 4 um, is a factor of 12 and divided through. Um, but that's simply it. That's the gradient. So there's an introduction to the gradient of a straight line. In the next video, we're going to look at the equation of a straight line and then apply this knowledge to finding those equations. <laughs>